Hi everyone, welcome back to this series of Amy Broker tutorials and videos. Thank you so much for joining me. It's really, really great to have you here. And I'm kind of excited to share this video with you because it's something that a lot of people have been asking for over the last couple of weeks and even months after starting these Amy Broker tutorial videos. And that is the art of scaling into your position. A lot of times we don't actually want to buy, you know, our entire position in one go. In fact, maybe we want to just buy our initial a little bit here, maybe on, an, on another breakout we want to buy our second part and you know maybe on another breakout after that we want to buy again and obviously finally we'd be selling our position. Now depending on your own personal rules uh, there's a few different ways to do it and it's a slightly little bit more complicated than you know than the other stuff that we've been looking at but what I'm going to do is just break it into two videos and we'll start with something really simple that is an example from the Amy Broker website itself which is the the dollar cost averaging example so as you probably know dollar cost averaging is where we just buy you know a fixed amount of shares or a fixed dollar amount of shares um, on a regular basis. So it might be every month, for example. So we've got September, we buy. October, we buy some more. November, we buy some more. December, we buy again. You know, and it, it usually coincides. Maybe we're getting a certain amount in our pay. Maybe it's going into our superannuation or 401ks. You know, that's that kind of thing. And it's a great thing to ac actually simulate and see if it actually should work or could work for us. So let's just jump straight into it. We've got our analysis and formula editor window. Um, this is where we can can lay out all of the code and see if it will actually work now with our dollar cost averaging if we are doing it every single month um, it's a very very simple way to do it what we're looking at is uh, is month if we type that in it turns blue and as you can see we open up our bracket and it, it tells us what we're looking for now it, it's not looking for anything so we can just close that bracket off which is really really great now the next bit is something that I haven't shown you before it's actually quite a common uh, quite a common thing in programming I'd never come it across before because I'm not really a programmer but this is this is great and all it is is a an exclamation mark and an equal sign so what that means is usually if we had two equal signs that would mean that it was equal to something. If we had the, have the exclamation mark and an equal sign, that means that it's not equal to something. So, to do our dollar cost averaging, what we want to do is make sure that, to th that this month is not the same as last month. And if that's the case, then we buy. So in other words, December's not going to be the same as last month, November. Um, and January is not going to be the same as last month's December. And that is how we set up the rule. Now, if you remember, and this is why I said it's just a tiny little bit more complex, because we have covered off a lot of this stuff in previous lessons, and you'll need to basically, you know, have that knowledge under your belt in order to, to do this sort of thing. Um, what ref is, it refers to previous signals. So if we say ref and the array that we're looking for, is obviously the month because we're looking for last month and then the shift is just last month so minus one and that's how we set up that so we want the month not to be equal to last month we'll close that off and we'll turn that into an array we'll, we'll create an array and we can call it anything we like so if we call it different month I think that really should do it. Now we can get into the actual scaling in or the, the, the buy rules. So the scaling in part itself is actually really simple. All we have to do is set up our buy. So we've got buy, we type that in and it turns bold. That means that Amy Broker recognizes it. Now to, to scale in, we assign sig scale in. And as you can see, that turns bold as well. So that means that Amy Broker recognizes that. Now, hang on a minute, it's not quite that simple because where then, where does our different month come into it? Okay, so this is where we need the other thing that we've shown you over the last couple of months um, in these Emmy Broker tutorials is the if then else function. So, in other words, if we have different month, which is the array that we set up right here, very simple. If we have different month, then we want to scale into our positions. Um, if we don't, so else, then we want nothing. So we want a zero return or in other words, no signal. 
Now to close that off, we close the bracket and we close off that line with a semicolon. Now, of course, we should be setting our position size as well. So just really quickly, uh, if we set position size, great, it turns blue and Amy Broker recognizes that. We open up the bracket and the size. How much do we want? Let's say we want to buy, you know, 100 shares. To do that, it's just SPS shares. And as you can see, that turns bold. That means that Amy Broker recognizes it. Obviously, if you do a quick Google search of set position size, it will come up with all of the different options that you can actually use for your position sizing. Um, you can use percent of equity. I think you can use the fixed dollar amount as well. So whatever it is, that's the kind of thing that you can do. In fact, for a dollar amount, I think it's SPS value. Yep, there we go. So that turns bold, that's great. Um, and we could just say $1,000, you know, every month. Now we obviously have to set up our sell signal as well. So we'll just quickly set, set that up. And literally we do not ever want to sell. So if we just put sell equals zero, that will return false for our sell signal. So in other words, it will just never sell. It'll never be a true signal. So let's try that out. Now, if we jump to analysis and either new analysis or, you know, whatever, whichever one you prefer. Um, and if we just pick up uh, the one that we've saved there. So I've saved it as monthly dollar cost averaging test. Um, there's that code that we just set up there. Very simple stuff to do so. And it's on a monthly time frame. So I've just selected my settings and I'm just going to say monthly. There we go. We can do it on the on the current symbol that we've got and you know from any uh, period or range that you like. Now there is one last thing that we have to set up properly in order to view our scale in settings. And if we just go to settings and if we go to report, usually it's a trade list. So you'll be able to see the trades that you take in a list. We want to actually set it to detailed log. So when we set it to detailed log and we click back test, here is what it comes up with. So just to give you a contrast, uh, if we go report and trade list, which is the normal way, um, it's just going to come up with one with one trade. And the reason is, is because it's just one trade and then we're scaling in continuously into that trade. So we actually want to see those scale in positions. And to do that, we need to select detailed log. So if we just run that again, there's our detailed log. And this is this will actually show us. So we've got our our entry. Um, then our next one is scale in. So initially it's a buy, the next one is a scale in, and as you can see, the number of shares keep going up. So that's how we can tell that this is actually working. Now, the reason it actually works continuously is because our signal of different month is continuously happening. So every month, this will actually keep occurring. If we only get one signal, um, you know, if we set up a, a signal that only happens once, then chances are that's not going to work with these particular rules. So in the next video, I'm going to show you a few different ways to do different scale-in methods. For example, if we're trading above a moving average, and maybe we only want to scale in three or four times. Um, every time it's above that moving average, we want to scale in again and again and again until it reaches four times and then we finish. So that's the kind of thing, you know, we can still do that using a tiny little bit of Ami Broker formula language, a little bit of coding. Um, it's still very, very possible. And I cannot wait to show you that stuff as well. Guys, I hope this has helped you in some small way. Stop by the website, it's asxmarketwatch.com. A whole bunch of free stuff there, free videos, free courses, uh, really, really cool. It'd be great to have you there, stop on by. Um, and until we meet again, happy trending and have a great week. Bye for now.